Okay, let's take a look at comparison operators. Operators are the little pieces of logic in a program that tell us to do a certain thing or tell us not to do a certain thing. Basically, it's how we take an action based on a variable value. And this is where variables really become super important. It's not just about alerting things or console logging. It's about giving a program a particular task to do or maybe not to do. And so a comparison operator basically looks like this. Let's go ahead and make some room here. It basically says, if your name is Caleb, do something. Otherwise, or else, do something else. That's basically all it is. And in fact, in the world of Python, it actually looks a lot like this. Very, very, very similar. JavaScript has a different type of syntax, so the way we make it look. So let's go ahead and create a script tag here. And let's take a look at our first if statement. So we're going to hard code this and then we're going to turn it into a prompt where we can actually accept user input. So let's do var name is equal to Caleb. And we're going to have to make this a little smaller here. And then we could say if parentheses, because it's doing an action, right? If it's going to do an action, you're going to need some parentheses in there. If name equals equals Caleb, open in curly bracket, close in curly bracket, just like that. And this is an if statement. So you're saying, hey, if a variable is equal to whatever you're expecting it to equal to, alert, do something. And let's go ahead and refresh and it says do something. Now, why did it do that? Because you can really see that name is equal to Caleb and if the name is equal to Caleb. Now there's one caveat here is we're using two equal signs. One equal sign means this is the variable. Variable is equal to whatever this value is. That's one equal sign. Two equal signs means, hey, is the name Caleb? Are we, ch we are checking to make sure that it is actually the right name. So this one is called an assignment operator. And this one is a comparison operator. Now there are several other comparison operators out there, but we're really just going to learn about this first one for now to keep it nice and simple. So now let's change this to prompt, what is your name? And now I can refresh, it's gonna say, what is your name? And if I type in any other name, let's, I'm gonna be my cat for a moment. His name is Zephyr. I'll type in Zephyr, nothing happens. And that's because if we go in here and we type in name, we can see it's Zephyr. And we're saying, hey, if the name is equal to Caleb, do something. It's not, currently it's saying it's Zephyr. But if we refresh and I type in Caleb with a capital K so it matches this value right there, it says do something. Cool. So now we actually have something to work with here. We can say, hey, ask the user for some information. And if that information matches what we're expecting, we can do something else. So now let's make this a little funner. Let's make an H1 in here. ID is equal to, let's just call it welcome. And let's turn this into a node. So var welcome node is equal to document dot get element by ID. It autofills for me. That's nice name. Make it smaller so it fits on one line. And now we have this in here and we can say, hey, if the name is Caleb, welcome node dot inner text is equal to welcome to your website, Caleb. And before we give this a shot, uh, I just noticed that we have document .get element by ID. It's not the name. It's welcome. In my fit of excitement, I got a little too ahead of myself there. And uh, you know, fun fact, that happens to all of us. So now I'm gonna hit refresh and it's gonna say, what is your name? I'm gonna say, my name is Caleb. And now it says, welcome to your website, Caleb. And if I say any other name, if I said my name is, no, not Zephyr, let's be Batman. My name is Batman. It does nothing. Batman's not supposed to be here. And so now we have some logic and something happening based on the fact that my name is Caleb. Now, what if we needed this to be a little more accepting? Because right now you need a capital K. If I type in Caleb with a capital or a lowercase K, nothing happens. Okay, well, now we need to actually change this. We need to say, if name is equal to Caleb with a lowercase K, well, that's not gonna change for that, and that, and that, and that, and 
that. Those are all the different variations and mix and matching them, of course. So what we can do is we can say if name dot to lowercase. So we're going to take whatever the name is, turn it into lowercase and then compare the lowercase value. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's do all uppercase Caleb. And then let's say, OK. And says, welcome to your website, Caleb. And that's because we said, hey, if the name, all capital letters, Caleb, and then we force it to be lowercase is equal to lowercase Caleb. And now it's going to match on every single one. We could say K-A-L-O-B. Bam, it still works. And this is where string manipulation gets very, very useful. So now at this point, we need to take a look at the actual if statement itself. What is making this trigger? Well, it's not just the fact that it does match Caleb. Yes, it's looking for a match, but the logic behind it is saying, is this statement true? Does name dot to lowercase equal Caleb? Well, if someone were to type in Caleb like this, would that match? No, those are different to a computer. But we said to lowercase, which is the same as saying, is Caleb equal to Caleb? And if yes, this would be true. Your computer then says, yep, this is true. Logically, beep, 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 yep, this is true. Make it do something. And so your if statements should always return true. And then what happens if they don't return true? How do we handle something that is the opposite of true? How do we handle something that's false? Or how do we handle multiple scenarios? Well, those are things we're going to get into in just a little bit. For now, I think we should just practice a simple comparison operator just to sort of get the hang of it. Because this is where we can have a lot of fun with it. We can do anything with our website at this point based on just if statements. And then lastly, let's take a one more quick look at the syntax here. So we've got if parentheses and then inside of these parentheses. So I could actually delete that. If whatever in here is true. So if value one is equal to value two, then you have some curly brackets. You've got an opening curly bracket and a closing curly bracket. Do some stuff in here. And if it's not true, if your if statement does not turn out to be true, this does not execute at all. It just skips over. Your program says, oh, there's nothing there. I'm not going to do anything with that. And that is essentially the core of every single programming language on the planet. If you want to get into artificial intelligence, if you want to get into machine learning, guess what? Most of it is a ton of if statements. It's if a data point matches a certain value, if a set of data matches exactly the outcome that you're expecting. If it is not, do something else. That's really all it is. Even if you look at, you know, more fantasy movies like iRobot, you know, the machine, Sonny was his name, Sonny will look around and he will analyze the entire picture and he will say, if there is a person there, say hello. If there is no person there, keep walking. So that's an if else statement. And at the end of the day, in programming, everything boils down to something called a Boolean. It is either true or it is false. That's it. There's not really a whole lot of middle ground there. And so that's all we're doing here is we're saying, hey, is this true? Hey, if this statement, if this if statement is true, do something. And if it's not, eh, maybe do something else. But we'll learn about that in a future lesson. So what I would like you to do is give this a shot. Ask for your name using a prompt and then check to see if that name matches a value that you're looking for. And if it does match that value, then do something else. Just write an if statement and sort of get used to it. And don't forget, you can experiment. You're not going to break anything. You could always do like, hey, if my name is Nathan, if my name is Zephyr, anything like that. You could also do uh, da, 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 instead of two lowercase, you could do two uppercase. You could do something like that. You could do all sorts of things. So don't forget to just Tinker around with it, have fun, experiment. You're allowed to experiment. And once again, there's no possible way you can break anything on your computer just writing this. So you are totally safe to experiment to your heart's content.